Hello, we are going to talk about uh, perhaps some little more specific uh, Swedish, uh, Finnish, um, and like archipelago uh, docking to to land. This is uh, how we do it in Sweden when we need to go into the cove, and we usually do. We don't. We have to go with the, the bow because it's it's uh, shallow, of course to the beach or to the rocks or whatever we have and um, we need we have an anchor and we have some mooring lines to, to play with to start with uh, you need to have some some gold and you have to check up your on your chart where it's good a good place to to lay for the night and you're checking your wind okay it will the wind will come from this side and then you will probably be in the cove that is protected sheltered from from the wind wind will not come from this side and you change to another cove. Um, there's uh, quite a few harbor guides um, in Sweden and, and Finland and Norway and, and uh, Denmark and uh, Baltic. The harbor guides they are really good in, ex in explaining wha what to look up for anything. They, they have a really good charts and also uh, satellite photos or, or a drone photos so they're really good uh, you can also just look at your chart we have a, a three meter line in the Swedish charts uh, and a six meter line depth curve in, in the chart. so if we have this the three meter line we can pretty much figure out if it's good or not good if the three meter line is too close to to the shore well, this is probably quite steep and it might be quite bad here because it's too going to be steep and if it's too far between here it could be too shallow could be a lot of weed here um, so might be not so good but when it's a nice good distance between the land contour and the three meters depth curve we could try to to go and make our anchor in there so we're coming here well, we have our boat now it's not a big boat it's is say eight ten meters boat five meters boat is fine um, we prepare with um, the mooring lines so I put on two mooring lines in in my bow and I make sure that I have the anchor ready to go in the in over the transom in the stern uh, I make sure that my anchor rope is at least 50 meter long hopefully even more because I want to put it as fur furthest out that I can can I put it on 50 meters or 60 meters that's fine okay I want to go to this rock over here um, coming in make sure okay there's a few other boats and I can see the anchor lines are going here so I cannot anchor my anchor line on this side or this side so I have to be stay in this corner it makes good and then when I think okay this is 50 meters I drop my anchor plop go down I hope it's not too deep I will check my, my depth, if it's 5, 8 meters, perfect, if it's 3 meters, probably not, but 4 meters could be a little too, too shallow, because I have a sailboat, I sail in, when I'm reached like halfway, I take my anchor up and just hold it for a while and feel if my anchor actually have a good bite and then I can use it for breaking and I can use it for anchoring okay well <clears throat> hopefully not alone so there's one in the bow looking for rocks shallow parts anything else Okay, we're going into the cliff we have here. Well, how far do we go? Well, 
further than you think. If I really go so my boat stops either with the bow into the rock or to my keel into the rock. Uh, if I cannot go then down there on the rock slowly then, then change rock. You need really to come close. You cannot go like two meters away and, and just shout jump to the guy or, or whoever it is here. Because two meters you don't jump and you will break something and it will hurt. And it's not good for the relation on the boat. So really go as far as you can and walk down slowly. Take your mooring line with you and just hold the boat. Back here, well, you take your anchor to the cleat loose. Walk there and help the person here. So you take your rope with you and um, <clears throat> either you try to find some some big rock here if it's not too far to a tree well, you can use a tree but you can also use these kind of rock wedges that you hammer in to your rock because I'd, I'd pretty much like my rope to be like four to eight meters not too short because it will be really going hard to, to my boat and to the, to the ro uh, ropes and not too far so if there's three here and 20 meters that's too far because it will be not so precise for the boat so four to meter, eight meters hopefully if I have a rope enough I will just go back and f um, forth and back like that and tighten up on the cleat on the boat or I will make a nice knot around my tree or whatever I have here so two half hitches or uh, uh, a double clue hitch something like that don't use a bovlin here because the bovlin you have to have it loose to untie it and you might not have it you might not be able to have your your boat that loose when you have to untie it so don't use the bowline use the double clue hitch or two half hitches um, or going back to the boat use your cleat there two lines then walk up back tighten your anchor anchor rope if you really want to avoid that the boat is going like this, if you're really uncertain about how your anchor is really caught into the mud or clay or whatever here, you can use spring. Once again, you can take spring from the back of the boat, so the boat will not move too much, much more steady like this. Um, Okay, so this is um, pretty much how we uh, go to the to the beach and uh, to land in in uh, Swedish archipelagos and Finnish archipelagos and Åland and other places. Okay, thank you for watching.